evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, we kind of left off on here uh, going in Matthew chapter 12. We also were talking about Matthew 24. And, uh, and I have to come back. And basically, we're going to pick up where we left off at. And we're going to go a little deeper into this because... I am seeing some amazing things that I've got to share with you. Uh, when we're here in Matthew chapter 12 right here, uh, we were talking about where Jesus was saying, if I be Beelzebub and cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. And it's actually kind of a facetious statement in the Greek because in the Hebrew, Matthew, we find out they couldn't cast out anything. And that's what his whole point was. In fact, it should have been obvious to us as well because we know they weren't casting out devils. They were amazed that he could do it, right? So they would be your judges. In other words, they couldn't do it. So therefore, they're the ones that truly belong to Satan's kingdom because they could not cast out the devils because they belong to the devils. He goes on to say, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, the kingdom of God is coming to you. Or else how can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except first, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. You know, that's pretty powerful right there when he talks about blasphemy, Speaking evil of, in other words, and it being, he's willing to forgive the things they're saying about him. But he said, when the Holy Ghost, see, but blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. He goes on to say, and we're going to read it again. Whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the, here's the key to this, so either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. Now you're starting, maybe you're starting to read between the lines here about the blasphemy then, right? He goes right into talking about the blasphemy, then he says, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. He's already letting them, they're already, see, they're calling him the devil. They said that he cast out the, they, he cast out the devils by the chief spirit of Beelzebub. And then Jesus lets them know, you know, then who do your sons cast them out by? Well, they couldn't cast out nothing, so therefore they were of the devil. As he clearly has already stated in Matthew chapter 23, when he said to the Pharisees, that you are a bunch of serpents and vipers, a generation of vipers. Seed of vipers, in fact, is how the King James words it. The Hebrew, it's a generation of vipers. Family of vipers. Serpents. He lets you know right up. You know, in another place, they he goes in there and they said, we not be not be born in sin. We have, but we have Abraham to our father. They, they were saying that because they didn't want to admit that they were offspring of the Babylonian captivity where we read in Ezra chapter 9 that they mingled the holy seed among the peoples of the nation. The Hittites, Perzites, Jebusites, not the Iranians, not of that day there, not the Babylonians. <clears throat> they mingled their seed with the peoples of the lands that they came out of Israel with, the Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, which we know according to the biblical narrative were Nephilim bloodlines. And the fact that they mingled the seed showed that they were in idolatry, not idolatry, but fornication. 
So, so we, so we get this here. So it says here, he'll forgive you for what you say against him. But when the Holy Ghost speak against, speak against the Holy Ghost, it won't be forgiven. So what does that mean? What is he talking about there? Well, what they said against him was the fact that they condemned his birth. They said, as we can read here in the book of John, I believe it is. Um, nope, that's not what I'm looking for. This is back saying this. Well, this is this is the same one here. Uh, I need maybe it's Luke. I need here. No, it's Luke twenty-one. John eight. There. Don't have everything in the right order that I want to have it in. It's not that one. Not that one. Let's see. Yeah, here it is. Right here. It is in John chapter eight. He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. He's talking to the Pharisees. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you do dishonor me. And I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Now, the point is that they said he was a Samaritan. A Samaritan's have Jew, have Gentile. And of course, the story that got passed down is that Mary had gotten pregnant by a Roman soldier. And this is why they called him a Samaritan. So they're basically, they're condemning his own genealogy, his own birth, and all the while, they're the ones with the corrupt bloodline. So Jesus says that all the iniquity against, the, you know, their blasphemy against the Son of Man would be forgiven them. In other words, he will forgive, he will pardon all the evil they say about him. He said, but one word against the Holy Ghost, it'll never be forgiven. So what is it about the Holy Ghost? But the Holy Ghost is what restores the, the, the spiritual bloodline of the believer. It's what connects you back to God. It's what makes you whole once again. Remember the scripture over in, um, where is it? Over in John, actually, I think it's this one. Well, we're in the, hmm. Nope. Wait a minute. I got to find, like I said, everything. I thought I had things in order, but I guess I don't. Maybe it's Luke here. Got to find the right place. Here. No, it's, I know it's in the book of John, actually. But it's not chapter 8. It's chapter 20. Here we go, right here. Then said Jesus to, to them again, Peace be unto you, and my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had, done, had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now, what was Jesus doing when he breathed on them? This was after the resurrection, by the way. And I've taught you guys this before. Remember over in Genesis 2, when God breathes onto Adam, that body, then the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Okay, right there. And this is the key part right here. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The Chaim comes from uh, the tree of life right here. The Chaim. Okay, there's your word right there. Chaim. And we look at the tree of life. Life. The eights, there's the word tree, and the eights, that means and the tree, ha chaim. There's that life right there. Now, when God breathed in Adam's nostrils, he breathed in a plural form of that life coming out of him. Because why? Why? Both Adam and Eve were in that one body. Now, the fall caused a break in the 
connection of God, the tree of life, and mankind, that spiritual seed. This is why Jesus said, if you speak a word, you can speak it against him. He said, but if you speak against the Holy Ghost, it'll never be forgiving you, not in this world or the world to come. And the Pharisees were condemning him like you would never believe. Condemning his birth, condemning everything about him. Now, what is fascinating though, when you look at that, and then when you come, say, to... Boy, did I ever get these way out of line here. Luke chapter 12. And he says right here, Oh, Luke chapter 12, same thing. I'm sorry, Luke, same one. But he that denieth me before men shall, shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you into, into, the, into the synagogues and into the magistrates and powers, take you no thought how what thing you shall answer or what you shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. See, that's because why? They have been quickened. He's talking about what's going to happen in the future to them. It's not the one I'm actually looking for, though. Hang on one second. got to find the right one here. Uh, gosh, did I end up not putting that up here? Ah, here it is, right here. Matthew chapter 18. By the way, Luke 18 also is the exact same way, but I don't have Luke up here, I don't think. Not chapter 18, I don't. But we'll just go with Matthew chapter 18. This is going to make sense to you. You know, when I shared this with my wife, I shared it with Elizabeth, but I was really under an anointing when I spoke about this here. So I hope that I can get the same message conveyed to you guys as well. Okay, so you, we read here, And verily I say unto you, except you be converted. And but, well, Actually, we need to go to the whole thing here. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. And he said, Verily I say unto you, Except you be converted and become as, a little, as little children. So there's got to be a conversion. There has to be something that takes place. A new birth, by the way. You shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same as greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, notice what he says here, I got it in blue, which believe in me. That's the key. Not just the little one there, but if you offend that little one that believes in Jesus Christ, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of the offenses, but it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Remember, he said, if you blaspheme him, he was going to forgive it. He said, but the whole, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, it will never be forgiven, not in this world or the world to come. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was sent to quicken us back to Jesus Christ, to quicken us back to God, to make us that royal seed, that spiritual bloodline. You see, because the bloodline had been corrupted, they had mingled the seed. They had gone. Ezra brings out over here. I'll just pull up Ezra real quick there. By the way, my internet is down. I'm running off my phone. So it's just barely keeping this thing going. So I don't even know if I'll be able to load the video, but I, I hope that I can to share this with you guys. Ezra chapter 9, right? This is where it was. Doing according to their abominations, even the Canaanites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, and the Moabites. All right, this is what Israel did. The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands. Even separating themselves did not resolve the problem they had done. Because what did they do? For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons. And so that the holy seed 
have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been first in this faithlessness. Yeah, they mingled the bloodline. If you read it in the Dead Sea Scrolls, they tell you how horrible it is. They tell you about the fornication, the adultery, everything. This was a horrible, horrible sin that had gotten committed. So what happens here, Jesus is saying, you can speak against me because they're basically accusing Mary of the same crime that they had committed when they were down in Babylon. And by the way, this little offense about this child is going to be linked to Revelation chapter 18. So watch carefully because judgment is coming. And then we're going to go back to Luke 21. We're going to go back Matthew 24. Same place. Because nation is going to rise against nation. Kingdom is going to rise against kingdom. Remember that, what I taught you the other day? The kingdom, see there is a spiritual kingdom. Jesus said it was going to be taken away from them and given to a, to a nation bearing fruit. Right? Let me pull that up so we have it. Because we're fixing to go there in just a moment. Matthew 21, Therefore say unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Right? That's what he said. And I'm hoping, see, I'm going slow. When I did this with my wife and them, oh, sorry, I went to email. I don't know why I went to email. <laughs> Gee, Elizabeth, I'm sorry, sis. I, I, I didn't know this was even going to work like this. And I know you've been after me to get into email. And I did not know that I was going to look up and get into this in the first place there. So I, I will see if I can still pull this off for you in the morning. All right, 21. Let's go there. Boy, God is being merciful to me tonight. 21 verse 43. All right, here we go. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard... Yeah, oh, that, we just we read that one too. Oh, wow, my gosh. But when the husband saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him. Let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. He's prophesying of his own death. And the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh. What will, we, will he do to, unto these husbandmen? They said unto him, the Pharisees said to this, right? He will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out, let out of his vineyard and, and to another husbandman which shall render him uh, the fruits of their season. Jesus saith unto them, Did you never read in the scripture the stone which the builders rejected the same as become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth fruits thereof. Notice, a nation. Goy, the Gentiles. The ones that will bring forth fruit. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Oh, remember the millstone? When the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spoke of them. Sure he did. Sure he did. In many more places than just that. So now you get that. Let's go back to that child. Find the right place. So whosoever shall receive such a little child in my name receiveth me. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. That's the cornerstone when it falls on you. It'll grind you into powder. Because why? When you offend that little one there, that little one has received the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said, if you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, it won't be forgiven in this world nor in the world to come. Woe unto the world because offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe unto that man by whom the offense cometh. You didn't know that that little child was linked back to that, did you? 
Neither did I, I have to be honest. I didn't know either, right? Now watch this here. It gets even better. And then we're going we'll go, to go to Revelation 18. You didn't know this was connected. I didn't either. I'm just going to first read to you verse 21, and then we're going to back up and look at it all. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. The angel took a millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city of Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. When you read over here about that child, and when you offend that child, it is better if the millstone were hung around your neck and you were cast into the bottom of the sea. You hear me, Pharisees? Jesus was letting you, you would have been better off had the millstone been hung on your neck and thrown in the bottom of the sea. Because what's going to happen is going to be worse than that. You remember in the book of Enoch, there was no mercy for those angels. And what they did in coming down here and procreating with the women here, deceiving these daughters of Adam and having children by them and causing these Nephilim to be born into the earth. There was never a forgiveness for that. It was an unpardonable sin. Jude brought it out in his own gospel, his one paragraph or one chapter gospel, probably more chapters than that. We just don't know where they are, right? But nonetheless, he brought it out that there was no forgiveness for them. And then he even said they'd crept in unaware. They done snuck in right amongst the believers there. And that's why we find in Luke 21 and in Matthew 24, the nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. But this parable here was showing the offense. And that is also linked back to the blasphemy where Jesus says, if you blaspheme against him, it'll be forgiven. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Why? Because once they that little one had believed on Jesus Christ, he's filled with the Holy Ghost. And when he's filled with the Holy Ghost, to dare condemn the spiritual unification that Jesus Christ has made that pro, uh, 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 way back for the children uh, of God to be reconnected to their father call the holy seed the holy bloodline to blaspheme against the holy ghost it'll never be forgiven in this world or the world to come so then we take and we go back and let's take a look at this revelation backing up to the beginning right Babylon, the greatest fallen has fallen, has become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit and cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornications with her. The merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Hold that in your mind. We're going to jump into that in just a moment. Verse 3. But I want to remind you in Ezra, and I took Ezra down already, but we're going to pop Ezra right back up here because there's one thing that you don't want to forget in Ezra chapter 9. See? For they have taken the daughters for themselves, for their sons, and for their holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the land. Yea, the hand of the, the, hand of the princes and rulers. Right? Right? They had been first in this faithlessness. The hand of the princes and rulers. What do we have over here in the book of Revelation? Um, right there. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Those kings, friends, of the earth. Those kings of the earth were right there. The rulers were the rulers of Israel, but they were doing it in Babylon. 
Okay? So let's go back now to Revelation, where we still are in Revelation. I'm sorry. Now I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues. So I adjure you, if you are a believer and you have fallen under the spell of of Zionism, if you have fallen under the spell of believing that you should go and support this movement and the building of the third temple and the sacrificial lambs and the red heifer and everything, you will be found with the blood of Jesus Christ on your hands if you don't come out of her. The great deception is now on. Her sins have reached into heaven. God hath remembered her iniquities. There it is, the iniquities. Her iniquities are her blasphemy. Reward her even she as she rewarded you. What? Reward her even as she rewarded you. She condemned Christ. And she condemned his children, the little children that had received the Holy Spirit. Remember when Jesus breathed on the children there? Where do we have that? John over here, I believe. John chapter 8. Um, no, sorry. It's in John chapter 20 is where that's at. Where he said he breathed on them. Receive ye the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. And as I brought out to you just a little moment ago there, where he breathed on them, see, the tree of life has come to restore us back, friends. It came to restore us back. That's, that's why he said, if you speak against the Holy Ghost, it'll never be forgiven you because it's the restoration. It's redemption. It's the promise of God being made manifest in our day. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. She says she's not a widow. In other words, she still claims that God is her husband, that that's her king. Pilate put a crown on Jesus, or they put the crown on Jesus' head, the Roman soldiers. Actually, those soldiers were not Roman, I don't believe. I think they were the, the, uh, the high priest uh, soldiers. Nonetheless, either way, the crown was placed on Christ's head, a crown of thorns. You remember what I said about those crown of thorns? The crown of thorns were put there to show that he was truly God manifested in flesh. Remember over in the book of Exodus? Let me jump over there in the book of Exodus with you. Exodus chapter 3. Right? Right here. When the Lord saw he turned, let's see. Here we go right here. They are a melech. Yehovah Eliav Belebat Esh. All right. Mito Hasanai. And that, that fire was from the midst of the Sanai. And a Sanai is a thorn bush. The Yara Vehine Hasanai Be'er Be'esh. The Hasanai. Why is it not eaten? Why is it not devoured? And Moses said, I will turn aside now and see this great side, why the bush is, is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God, see, God called unto him out of the bush. See, and 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 he and he says to him, God from Metoch uh, from the midst of the thorn bush, Moshe, Moshe, 
He goes, I'm sorry, he says, Ve'yomer, Moshe, Moshe. Ve'yomer, Hineni. Here I am. See, God says, Moses, Moses. Ve'yomer, El Tikarav, Chalum, Shanelecha, Me'al, Reglecha, Ki, Hamakum, Asharata, Omer, Aliyav, Adamat Kodeshu. And he said, draw not nigh unto to hither, but put off your shoes from off your feet, for the place whereon you stand is a holy ground. I shared this with you guys a long time ago why he said this. Because the first thing God said to him, I am the God of your father. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses, because he was reared into the house of Pharaoh, they lied to him. They said that they were truly his parents even though he knew that, that, that his mother and father was uh, Jochebed. There was still that lingering question, no doubt, in his mind. Who his father really was. And God settles that question with him first when he says it. That's why when I'm, I, I'm and I wasn't even looking at it, I'm just reading in Hebrew and it just it just really hits me when I see that. And he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I surely have seen the affliction of my people that are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry, the reason of their taskmasters, so I know their pains, right? So he, he gets all of this, right? But the point that I was really wanting to make, and I, I don't want to spend time on this, I shouldn't have stayed as long as we did, was the fact that God was speaking from the midst of a thorn bush to Moses. He even goes down to that one part there. When you ask them, they'll ask me, you know, what is what is his name? It says right here, Hinehonochi, Ba'el b'nei Yisrael ve'amati alechem Elochai avotechem shelechani aleichem ve'amuli. They will say to me, Mashimo, what is his name? Ma'omer aleichem. What do I say to them? And God said to Moses, Say to them, I am that I am has sent you. Remember when Jesus said to the, to the children of Israel of his day, Except that you believe I am, you will die in your sins. Except at them may mean you will die in your sins. So the same God that was speaking to Moses here was the one speaking out of that thorn bush on Calvary when he cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I just wanted to share that with you. I, I, I hope I didn't lose my, my train of thought here and where we're going at. So let's come back over here. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, 
death, mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God which, who judgeth her. The kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city of Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour thy judgment is come. See, she's called Babylon because the Pharisees are the children from the fornication that was committed by the rulers. See, not everybody in Israel was bad or corrupt. The, all the original believers come from Israel in the first place. 3,000 of the house of Israel were converted on the day of Pentecost. But he also said that he was tearing from their hands, talking to the Pharisees, and would give the kingdom over to a nation producing fruit. That was the Gentiles. The nation, Goy. But when we get on further down, they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city where were made rich, all the ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, you heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Why? When you have, when you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, it will not be forgiven you. When Jesus said about the little child that believed on him, you would be better off if the millstone itself were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the depth of the sea. If you've offended even the least of one of these little ones. Why? Because he knew when this day comes now, when the angel, the mighty angel, took a millstone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. You will be better off had you been drowned in the depth of the sea because the angel only threw the millstone as a type. And when you read in the scripture there where he said that the chief cornerstone that was rejected by the builders, he said, if you fall on it, that's one thing, but if it falls on you, it will grind you to powder. And that's because of the blaspheme of his children. Let's go a little deeper with this now. I, I've, got to, I've got to take you deeper. We're going to go here to Luke now. Luke also brings us out. I want to show you though Luke real quick here in the... Um, and I know you guys may not see it very well here. But I'm, I'm wanting you to be able to see it the best way I can here. Okay, that's about as much I think as it's going to let me do this. Okay, in Luke, it's broken up. Jesus foretells the destruction of the temple. That's one. Jesus foretells the wars and the persecution. It's another one. Jesus foretells the destruction of Jerusalem. Even another one. And the coming of the Son of Man. Now the way they broke it up is pretty important because the destruction of Jerusalem is actually 70 AD. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to, uh, uh, flee to the mountains, and let them that are, with, that, that are in the midst of of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are that with child, etc. Right? This, this, by the way, is when Titus comes in and destroys Jerusalem. Now I want you to notice something. Now, let me go to where you can really see this, though, with the, the scripture. Let me go down to where that was at. 
See, when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. All right? These be the days of vengeance. All these things which are written may be fulfilled. Right? And there shall be, all right, but when you get down to verse 25, it takes another turn, goes into what's happening in our day. Then there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars upon the earth, the stress of nations, perplexity of the sea and the waves are roaring. See, Jerusalem, and it's going to be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, friends, the time of the Gentiles has already been fulfilled. Israel is a nation once again, but the sad truth of it is the Pharisees are back in control. Remember the men in black? Let me remind you of something, right? Uh, that's the men in black. The chief men in black is this guy right here. And I don't know. Um, these guys, let me just go presidents. As you already know, there's Obama with the men in black. There is Trump with the men in black. Uh, there is Zelensky with the men in black. Okay. Uh, what do we have here? Again, Trump with the men in black. Bush with the men in black. And it doesn't matter who it is. The men in black control everything. They control the world. Doesn't matter which men in black they are. This one's interesting right here because this is the rabbi that is over the Poway Synagogue where the shooting took place. And we certainly do not condone any violence whatsoever. Regardless of my differing views with the men in black, I don't condone violence against them, period. But it's interesting that the synagogue is where this happened at. You've got Putin and the men in black. And there's many pictures, as you already know, all these men in black, right? So as we look at that and then we come back, where are we at? Over here in Luke. Was it Luke where I was wanting to read that at? I forget now. I kind of lost my train of thought on that. Okay. Now, before we get to verse 10, you have to remember what started this all off. Um... I think that's only in the book of Matthew, though. Let me let me pull Matthew up real fast. Let's go to Matthew. We're in chapter 18 there, so we're going to jump over to Matthew 24. Yeah, in Matthew 24, they're going out. They depart from the temple, and, and the disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See, see you not? All these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Okay? And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him. They wanted to know when it's all going to happen. And he said, Take no heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, Given that example again, if you recall, as I said, this guy right there in the picture and behind you, he is that Messiah figure. Oh, wow, look here, another picture with him. Jeez, he's just everywhere you look at, he's always there, right? I um, thought there was a better one, though, where you could see that. He's, he's, the, he's the head rabbi for these guys, for the men in black. He is the Messiah, they call him. 
And Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. And the men of black control that as well. Be ye not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. But then we came into this part I shared with you the other day. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. What did I tell you a moment ago? Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone will be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall will be ground into powder. That's Revelation 18. He just uses the parable about the child to show you you'd be better off if that's the way you went. Because when that stone of Christ falls on you, there's not going to be any mercy whatsoever. All right, so the kingdom is given to a nation. So we come back into Luke. And we're just looking at it from a different angle here with Luke. Nation shall rise against nation. Goy. Al Goy. Gentile upon Gentile. And kingdom against kingdom. Why? Because they're coming back and they're resetting up their kingdom. The Pharisees once again trying to get control. But the, na but the kingdom already... Remember we talked about that the other day? When they asked Jesus the question in Acts chapter 1, when will the kingdom be restored to Israel? He said, it's not for you to know that the seasons nor the time. But we found out that it was when they would receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. That happened on the day of Pentecost. And the house of Israel was present there as well. And 3,000 of them were converted and had received the Holy Ghost and were sealed by that Holy Spirit of promise. And of course, they always were after them. So judgment came in, brought them down. Now he says here, And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines and pestilence, fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. See, that's not the same as when Jerusalem is compassed about with armies and, and the desolation is thereof, and everything that happens is just like an old-fashioned sword war on the earth that happens there up here where we see this events happening fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven that's happening at the same time the kingdom is against kingdom you see the pharisaic dynasty the men in black they are coming against the true believers of jesus christ They're coming against them in every way imaginable. And he goes on to say, But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues. Remember I showed you the Poway rabbi? And into the prisons being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. They control the governments. They're going to establish the seven Noahide laws. So yes, you're going to be brought before kings and rulers for the name's sake of Jesus Christ because that is one of the violations. You can't have any other God over what they deem to be God. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God for his name's sake, you're going to be drug in before the kings and rulers. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth of wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And, you shall be, and, and ye shall be betrayed both by parents, brethren, and kinsfolk. What did he say up here? Nation shall rise against nation. 
that's not just any kind of nation. Those are Gentile believers. And kingdom against kingdom. That's why he says, and you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. That's where we are, friends. But all this that's about to happen to us is going to backfire on the Pharisaic dynasty. Jesus already said to them they would be much better off had a millstone been hung around their neck than to offend you. He also said that if you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, I'm speaking to those of you out there that know this. You know, you love to make and belittle. That, by the way, that's the. Do you do you guys even get that? And, and I'm not saying that to belittle my friends that are listening. I'm really wanting you to get this. Do you not know the big, big trump card that they like to do? is that you're just nobody. You're Gentiles. You're a lower species. The Pharisaic dynasty, the men in black, like to elevate themselves up that they are a more righteous, more holy bloodline. And that Gentiles are just the same as animals. That's why Jesus said, if you offended even one of these little ones, you'd be better off that the millstone, they just hang it on your neck, throw you in the ocean, get it over with now. Because what he's going to bring when he brings judgment isn't going to be pretty. So I say unto you, those of you out there that are following along the evangelical movement to support Israel, the only support that Israel needs right now is the gospel of Jesus Christ to try to find every true believer that is over there in Israel. If the gospel doesn't open their eyes, my friend, nothing will. The times of the Gentiles have already been fulfilled. We know this because Israel has been created as a state once again. So the Pharisaic bloodline is now back in power over there again. That's why we have kingdom against kingdom. Jesus' royal bloodline kingdom against the Pharisaic kingdom. It's a true showdown. And it's going to look like they have the upper hand. But he said to you, come out of her, my people. You know what's interesting? Do you know in the book of Revelation where we read all this? Do you know that's also where he tells you to come out of her? And I another, heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues. See, God knew that some of his own people would be in the middle of that nonsense. Supporting a demonic kingdom that Jesus had already condemned from the very beginning, that Jesus had already called a generation seed of vipers. When are you going to wake up? Oh my gosh. I, all I know to do is tell you the truth. I, I promise you, I don't know any other way but to tell you guys the truth. Nation will rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great tumults, grievous famine and an earthquake in places. All these are the beginning of suffering. Then they will bind you over for tribulation and will kill you and will become a reproach to you will become a reproach to all nations for my name. Then many will be perturbed, deal treacherously with each other, and be enraged among themselves. False prophets will arise and lead many astray. When wickedness multiplies, the love of many will grow faint. Whoever waits until the end will be saved. And this gospel, that is, Evangelii, will be preached unto all the earth for a witness concerning me to all nations, and then the end 
will come. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting this channel. Um, thank you for supporting our Patreon channel as well. God bless you.